this our government takes major steps to tackle Ghana. I'm saying is as he holds a national security meeting to devise ways forward. This afternoon we have details on what we know even as more pressure is piled this time by organized labor. Also to come, NPP National Executive Committee meets the fashion out modalities to reunite the rank and file of the party in the Wale Wale constituency following the controversial withdrawal of the incumbent MP from the race. A lot later in sports, we'll tell you why the Confederation of African Football CAF has withdrawn its approval of the Babayara Stadium in Kumasi for competitive football. Feels good to be back. Even better to see you. This is New Central, and I'm Kevin Yamana. I am Maui Naik Better. The bulletin starts right now. For the first time since the resurgence in demands for an end to illegal mining in this country, government is holding a national security meeting to discuss possible solutions to the Galamse scourge. The meeting at the behest of the president is, according to sources, expected to take stock of the fight so far and allow the government to re-strategize to return to removing the illegal miners from their hideout and prevent the destruction of the country's lands and river bodies. This afternoon, we want to take stock of what the effects of illegal mining and unethical mining has been on us as a people. Uh, based on our collection so far, we know that it has ravaged about 19,000 hectares of cocoa farms, about the size of Koforidja, all of Koforidja, uh, destroyed by Galamse. Uh, 13 major rivers in this country, including Tano and Cobra, Birin Pra, Dainsu Black Volta, are now undrinkable with little aquatic life. Remember that these are the river bodies that give us water in our homes. Eight out of ten chronic kidney diseases are from Galamsey community, so you can understand why our dialysis centers are overwhelmed. And 50% of treated water is lost due to 600% rise in turbidity. Ghana may need to import water by 2030. Uh, that's how terrible the situation is. It's 2024, September of 2024. We're entering 2025 in five years the data is telling us that we could be importing water into this country. Let's talk about children who are born in this time in, in our lives as a country. Five birth deformities are reported in Galamse communities, including left, uh, cleft lips, lips and the rest. 3.5% of agricultural land, about 4,760 hectares, uh, size of the greater Accra region, where we are speaking to you from, destroyed by Galamse. But there's more uh, pressure on this matter. The Speaker of Parliament, Alban Sumana Bagbin, has reiterated his stance that he knows that some members of Parliament are involved in illegal mining. The comment comes as the nation declares war on the menace seen as a national security threat. In an exclusive interview, Alban Bagbin said that the failure of the president in dealing with the problem has made Ghanaians lose interest in government's promises to fight the kanker. I actually don't know the steps that government took to try and turn the tide. I know only of the president putting his uh, presidency online and uh, calling in the military. Did he lie to us? Uh, well, um, I know his conscience will be disturbing him now, okay? Uh, because uh, I think he underestimated the challenge. What we have in Ghana is despondency. Uh, people are losing hope in the future of the country. And so we have young men and women who are aware of the risk involved in illegal mining, yet they defy everything to put their lives at that risk. It tells as something as leaders. That's an indictment on our leadership. They shouldn't, these young people shouldn't be doing that. 
and yet they have no alternative. So is that so that? Mm. It is not for you to, to order military to shoot and kill, as some of them stated, any person involved in risking his or her life to survive. It's not right. It's not right. We got it wrong right from the beginning. Because as you are aware, the term Galamsi came from Gada and Sel. And that was done by who? The ordinary citizens. When we decided to commercialize the activity, to industrialize it, we gave it to big time foreign companies. We did not develop the industry ourselves. And those companies came and exploited all our resources to the benefit of the metropolitan West and to the abject poverty of we the owners of the resort. We need to assure these young people and all those involved that there's something better than they are doing. How is this a threat now as we speak? Election. Serious threat. Most, most of those people definitely uh, will not buy what the politicians are saying now. But they've heard it many times. And as they said, the failure of His Excellency Nana Adodankwa has given almost fatal blow to the trust of Ghanaians in the democratic process. But so many people believed in him that he was going to make a difference. Unfortunately, he has disappointed all of them. On Tuesday, when that conversation about illegal mining came up, you said something, and I'm going to quote you here, that if we take a census, some of you, referring to MPs, will be there. Why do you say that? Because they are involved. You know for a fact that a number we, of we, we Please, even when we talked about this, uh, uh, there were some fraudulent uh, micro... Uh, finance companies that came out some time ago. <laughs> These MPs were involved. And some of them used those resources to contest to come to Parliament. And they are again involved. Couldn't you have done In anything the... about it? I wasn't even there. I didn't know it until some investigations were conducted. Now, the Christian Council of Ghana has added its voice to the increasing calls for a decisive and total ban on small-scale activities and illegal mining as well. Uh, let's connect with uh, General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Cyril Fayose. Uh, Reverend, good afternoon to you. Is it your honest opinion that the government has failed in the Galapagos? Hello, Rev. Reverend Fayose, can you hear us? It would seem that uh, Reverend Fayose cannot hear us, but uh, the plan was to speak to the General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana on development around uh, our environment, environmental governance, uh, the kind that we see around the mining, which is led to what you see on your screens at the moment, the pollution complete pollution of our water bodies. Today they are adding their voice to the call uh, that illegal mining activities, small scale mining activities should be completely banned. Let's get more uh, from Reverend Cyril Fayose, who is the General Secretary for the Christian Council. Uh, Rev, I uh, hope, hope we have you back on the telephone. Good afternoon to you. Let's talk about the fight against Galamse. G government has failed, uh, hasn't it? Say that again. Uh, government has failed in its fight against Galamse, ha hasn't it? Yes, yes. Uh, go government has failed woefully. And uh, we are calling for government to sit up and for a strong commitment to stopping this menace in our country. By not just government, but all of us, all of us as citizens of Ghana, I um, mean, the Council of States. The uh, Senate states, that is Parliament, the judiciary, uh, 
um, religious leaders, traditional authorities, every individual in the country. It's our time to do something or else we'll go, we'll go over the edge into the deep abyss. Mm, I see. As a result, the Christian Council is calling for a uh, ban on small-scale mining activities uh, to affect illegal mining as well. Talk to us a bit more about your demands on government. Yes, about two years ago, we uh, went on a, a march. We went to the Yaramse site. We talked to a number of stakeholders and uh, placed a petition at the presidency that there should be a total ban on small-scale mining or at least a moratorium for a number of years so that we can we can go back to the drawing table and see how best to prosecute this whole uh, uh, menace in our country. You know, um, the mining is a source of livelihood to people, so we can't we can stop it completely, but we have to find a way to do it so that it doesn't uh, harm the entire country. We can't sacrifice uh, the greed of a few for the the health or the good of all of us. Mm, I see. Rev, as we wrap up, uh, there are those who say that, yes, this Christian council has spoken, but as a very influential voice in our political ecosystem, it would appear that not much has followed the speaking. Uh, there hasn't been enough pressure from your side on government. Uh, as you went into the call, the renewed calls for a ban on Galamse and small-scale mining activities, do we expect you to take to increase the pressure on government? Well, I don't know where that uh, comment is coming from. We have been at the forefront of this fight against Galamse for years. For years. I mean, since... Uh, as far back as I can recollect, 2009, we have been making statements on, on this menace up to now. And our statements are there to prove it. In fact, the last time we went to visit some of these Garamsey sites to acquaint ourselves with it, I mean, we became the laughing stock of, uh, of the media, especially, and social media that we went there to pray. So uh, we have been at it and we'll continue to be at it until we find a solution to this problem. I see. But Reverend, you can understand why the people on social media do not think prayer will work. It hasn't worked, has it? But, but we are not saying that we, are, we went there to pray. You see, we do not go there to pray. Of course, we are praying persons, so everything that we do, we pray about it. Mm. But that was not the, the purpose of the visit. The purpose of the visit is to understand the, the magnitude of the problem, to acquaint ourselves with what is happening on the ground. We, we can't just sit in our churches and make a release statement on an issue Indeed. that we don't, we don't know much about. So that's why we went there. And we all did not only visit them, but we had engagement with the people who are practicing the I'm say, with traditional authorities and all stakeholders. Mm. So that is why we went there. Very well. Rev, Rev, there are those who have wondered why the Christian Council uh, has not thought about dissociating with politicians who make the promises to fight against uh, Galamse, but only end up uh, making the situation worse. Yet we see them in our churches uh, trying to canvas votes sir, in the same sir, churches. The light, the light is, is not too clear. I'll I, take I'm it again. The, indeed. I was asking... For those who think that at this point the Christian Council should be dissociating with people or politicians who make promises to deal with the Kanka of Galamse, fail to do that, yet come into the same churches and then canvas votes there. Uh, I, if, if I understood what you said, you are saying that the Christian Council should dissociate itself from the person's the powerful people who are involved in Galamse. Is that I, what you're I, absolutely, because at this point it will seem that you are enabling them when you allow them into your your churches, your holy grounds to canvas for votes. Oh, the church, the church is an open place. It's a public place. We do not buy anyone 
from coming there. In fact, uh, the church is not the righteous person. We come to church because we as Christians believe that all have seen the holy shot of the glory of God. So even uh, people who have committed can I say crimes when they want to come to church, we will still welcome them. But then we'll talk to them to stop uh, their nefarious activities. But it isn't the problem the fact that they don't come there for redemption? But they are, they are coming there because they want, you know, your church members to vote for them, turn around uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, enable Galamse, which poisons our, our food uh, uh, and our water uh, uh, sources. That, that is a very wild, wild allegation. And I thought wild, it would rather uh, be practical, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any evidence to, like, to talk about it. Very well. I appreciate you speaking to us. Thank you so much. Reverend Cyril Fayose is General Secretary for the Christian Council of Ghana. And we're going to stay on the subject of illegal mining because this afternoon, as we've been telling you about, we know that the Trades Union Congress and organized labor, amongst many others, are as well meeting over the conversation, Galam say, not just that, the media coalition again. Mining as well has been holding a news conference and again by Gab. Thanks for joining us. What can you tell us has been uh, in terms of the discussions of the Labour groups this afternoon? Right, to declare a state of emergency immediately and also deploy safety officers to all the mining communities and get hold of all the equipment that they use for the mining processes and just destroy them. That is one. Secondly, organized labor is also asking for a special to be set up to prosecute perpetrators who are involved in, 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 in this mining activity. They said that's what organized labor is well. And when we look at organized labor, it's slightly different from the statement of Utah. Even though Utah is a member of organized labor, in the case of Utah, they are given up the end of this month, the 30th of September, some way someone to withdraw their service. But in the case of organized labor, they have not given a clear cut as to whether they were going to withdraw their service or not. But they said that means for the person to declare a state of emergency, ban all mining activities, destroy all equipment, activities, but also a special call to be set up to prosecute the status. And it's, it's interesting you mentioned the bit about lay down tools because that's one thing many have argued that organized labor can use and the fact that they have the power to cause the hand of government to be moved to prevent the ongoing destruction. They say that is not on the cards at this particular point. If not, have they issued any ultimatum to which they're expecting all of these demands they're making of government uh, to be met? So when I want to listen to them carefully, realize that they have not given any um, enough or adequate timelines as to when government should um, for them to withdraw their services. But they are still sticking to that. And we are monitoring the events. They want to speak to the Secretary General, who is also the first of organized labor. They are monitoring the events to the end of September. They want government to ban that. But as to for them to stick out their neck and give you the timeline, uh, just like what UTAC has done, that the first of September, UTAC was like, we expect organized labor to also do the same. But labor did not speak to the But they saw they are saying the president to ban all many activities. Right. That they will continue to monitor the environment um, within that space. Within from next week going, they are likely to see another, another, another blend or another issue coming from the office of organizing with regard to the mining and then the anti activities in the country. Just quickly, as to the number of groupings who were present, which groups were present? We know um, UTAG is a part of organized labor. Were they present as well during this meeting? Right, so what, what is organized labor is made up of three labor centers in Ghana. We have the, the forum, the forum is led by Mr. Zibampuado, 
So all those public sector unions within the public service, you have NAS, you have NAGA, CCT, you have GRNM, you have Ghana Medical Association, you have GITAC, all of them, and, and the services, they are all gospel as well, they are all part of the but they want to come to the TEC, you have about 22 to 24 affiliate unions of the TEC. You have the Public Services Workers Union, you have the House Services Workers, you have the Timber and Woodworkers, you have mining. They are all part of the TEC block. They are not the Ghana Federation of Labor, and led by Mr. Abraham Kumsim, the Secretary General, Kenneth Kumsim. They are those, a lot of them are into the private areas. They, live, they, are, in the, they are in the textile industry, the manufacturing sector. All of them have come together. To issue this particular statement. Right then, Daniel, I will return to you as and when uh, there's a bit more from that particular media engagement. But many thanks. That's Daniel Opoku, who is our Labour Affairs correspondent. And I mentioned to you that the Media Coalition Against Illegal Mining as well has been meeting. They have just one word, stop the lip service in the fight against Kalamse. That's according to the Media Coalition Against Kalamse. And the group has initiated a campaign against illegal mining in a bit to urge the president and government to take decisive action against the menace. Let's touch base with my colleague Judith Brown, who is currently at the uh, Ghana International Press Centre, where that news coverage, or news conference rather, uh, is ongoing. Let's find out from her what exactly has been happening. Judith, who has been present, or who is present at this particular press briefing? What's been the message outside of the fact that government should stop paying lip service to the fight against Galamsey? Right, and so Mariana currently um, at the Ghana Press Center is the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. We also have the Christian Council, uh, the Executive uh, Women's Council or the network. We also have Kenna Shibe, who is an engineer, and he is uh, acting as the convener of this group. And we have the Ghana Journalists Association. And so the president of the association is currently here. Currently he's speaking. Um, but I mean, the... The first to speak on this matter was the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. And they were the ones asking government to stop the lip service. And so basically, he said that this issue is an issue of protecting our home, which is our country, Ghana. He says that the situation in Galamse has worsened over the years, despite several calls uh, from the, uh, the Bishops Conference, as well as this uh, particular association on government to eradicate the menace. And so they are decrying the continuous destruction of the water bodies. They say that the lack of enforcement of environmental protection laws is also uh, causing this menace to continue. Um, he's calling on the chiefs uh, as well as government to ensure that they actually stop this menace. They say the lack of political will has also exacerbated the issue of illegal mining. They're asking uh, governments all in all, stop the, the lip service against uh, the fight against corruption. And they are calling for immediate action on this matter. Um, they, they also said that political parties should stop uh, playing politics with the lives of Ghanaians. And they are recommending strongly, basically, a temporal uh, moratorium on licensed mining in Ghana. And so they say, basically, that whether or not it is illegal or it's legal, uh, it is still causing the same problem. And so they are they're calling on the president to um, uh, temporarily uh, place a moratorium on licensed mining in Ghana. And lastly, to provide employment for opportunities for the youth in these areas so that they will not continue to engage in the menace of illegal mining. And so basically, this is what has ensued right there in uh, the Ghana, uh, Ghana Press Center. Uh, we are seeking to hear from uh, what the others would say, especially the convener of the group, Ken Ashibe. But for now, we know that the Ghana Journalist Association's president uh, is currently speaking on the matter. Uh, and Judith, just briefly, we know that one thing that's been on the minds of a lot of people as these demands have been made is a timeline to which they are expecting to see the government take some action. Have they been impressed, first off, with the government commentary since the resurgence in the fight against illegal mining? And have they been providing any timelines to which they're expecting to see some action from government? Right, not at all, not at all. They, they are very, very angry at the fact that, especially when the president had the opportunity to speak 
uh, the Ghana Bar Association's conference, uh, which is happening in Kumasi currently, they were very angry at the fact that he never made mention of anything as regards to illegal mining, especially when it's an issue that has become topical in the country as of now. And so they're calling on government to make a statement on this matter, especially the president. But for now, they haven't given any ultimatums as to when or what they expect government to do at this point. We are, we are yet to hear from the convener of the group. I'm expecting that he will probably make a statement on an ultimatum that they're giving government uh, to stop the menace and do so uh, immediately. Marana. Right then, Judith, I uh, appreciate those details. That's my colleague, Judith Brown, from the Ghana International Press Centre, where we understand not just the uh, media coalition against Galamse, but the Catholic Bishops' Conference and the Ghana Journalists' Association as well, all present and speaking, demanding action from government over the activities of illegal mining and its ravages on the country's lands and water bodies. We understand, like we started at the top of the bulletin with, that the government is holding uh, a high-level national security meeting over this. We'll be bringing you details as and when we have them, but it will take us on to our very first break here on New Central. When we return, we're the hearts of politics because the governing New Patriotic Party's National Executive Committee has been meeting over what has been a long-standing deadlock in Wale Wale. We have details for you when you stay with us. Please do stay. Now, the NPP's National Executive Committee have just concluded a meeting to discuss the controversy surrounding the Waliwali -Wali election rerun. The meeting comes after the party's national secretariat took note of the outcome of the rerun, which was marred by disruptions and allegations of foul play. One of the feuding parties, incumbent MP Laraba Zuera Abdul, has withdrawn from the race since then. The Waliwali -Wali election rerun was held after the initial election was annulled due to irregularities. However, the rerun was not without controversy as the culprit was arrested for disrupting the sorting and counting process. Six persons have so far being arrested for allegedly disrupting the NPP's parliamentary primaries that were held Monday 9th September 2024 uh, following a high court ruling that annulled the previous election and ordered a rerun. Let's have a quick chat with our correspondent who's been following the story. George Quinnin uh, monitored this meeting at the Elisa Hotel here in Accra. George, uh, we know that the meeting has concluded. What have you gathered so far? Thank you so much, Timmy. And so this meeting was a squeaky tight one, and all the rank and file were there, including the president and the vice president, who also doubles as the flag bearer of the party, uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya. And even the media, it was very difficult to even film. We were, you know, prevented from getting close to the building. So we all seated at the full area. And uh, most of them after the meeting were tight lipped. And for instance, Justin Kodia, who is the general secretary, uh, what, they didn't want to speak to us, by any chance, or didn't want to speak to us. But we managed to speak, uh, pick some few words from uh, Stephen Tim, who is the chairman of the party. And for him, it has been a fruitful discussion. Even though his position was scanty, he said that uh, they managed to resolve the Nkoko issue, but with the Wale Wale issue, they are still on it. They expected the candidates to come to the meeting, but they were not there. And also some faithful going independent, for instance, Cynthia Morrison, it's just two days for her to file a nomination but they can still ensure that they bring her back to the party because it's just a grandfold member who they can talk her out to come back to the party. So this is what the chairman has to say today. Yeah. What is the way forward for Oma, a bit of Koko, Kunko? What is the way forward? We have resolved it. The Vidasanti has been on standby to hear something like maybe there will be a next. Primary or something like that, but that's not what happened. Um, candidates, two of them, right? One step down, and that is good. Okay, Chema, I'm a co independent, and then I got two days from Akoko Fale. Akoko Fale, now I'm going to use a question of nation. And then I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, are you trying to reach out with them? Oh, independent, even the day before the general election, right? 
can get them to step down. Has it been any deliberate discussions with uh, Cynthia Morrison? We are we are working on Cynthia uh, more Central, right? Yeah. She's a party member, committed party member. She may be, be aggrieved in one way or the other. Yeah. We are going to impress on her to drop it. Friday is the closing day, but that is immaterial as far as getting an independent person candidate to step down. Mm. So even after Friday, we can still get her. So you know, would you say this meeting really, uh, really was a fruitful discussion? Oh yes, very much so. That's why I'm able to engage with you okay. to answer your questions. Okay. 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 Sivinin team is national chair of the NPP uh, discussing the Waliwali constituency primary outcome, but also touched on Goma Central, where the incumbent MP has announced that she will go uh, independent. I want to talk to uh, George again. George, briefly tell us uh, what really was the outcome that they, you, know, you gleaned from uh, that meeting? Well, I mean, what I can really say is that with all these issues that are at hand, uh, for the past year, they're able to resolve this whole issue. That whole agenda of bringing the aid uh, would actually be realized. So clearly, they are made trying to ensure that these issues are really resolved before the general election, so that the uh, agenda of breaking the aid will be more materialized. Similarly. I see. Did the party take a decision on who then becomes the candidate for Wale Wale? No, 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 no. The chairman didn't mention that to me. The information was very scant. So uh, with the little information that I had is what we had from the chairman. Very Those well. information, I'm sure, are very sensitive. So they didn't want to put that uh, across. Anymore. Indeed, George, we'll leave it here. Thank you so much for yeah. the reporting, George Quinn, in there. Away from the camp of the NPP, the National Democratic Congress, uh, NDC, and the Greater Accra Police Command has agreed on the date for the NDC's upcoming protest scheduled for the 17th of this month. The police has also agreed uh, with them on routes to be used. Speaking to the NDC, uh, speaking to the media rather, the NDC General Secretary Fifi Kwete said the only challenge is about the termination point which is yet to be agreed on. Joseph Armstrong is at the Central Police Station is joined us via Zoom for a quick chat in relation to this. So Armstrong, do we have an idea what the agreed route is ahead of September 17? Yeah, no one so uh, all is set for the uh, demonstration on the 17th of this month. Uh, so the police command and then the NDC, they just uh, left this place. Currently where I stand is the Electoral Commission uh, new head office. Earlier we were at the uh, Central Police Command Office and um, they, they had an issue of where they'll be terminating after the demonstration. They start from the brass spot to TUC, then they'll present a petition at Parliament House, then they'll come to the uh, Electoral Commission to also present a petition there for the forensic audit of the uh, voter register. The challenge they had was uh, where they will terminate when they get to the Electoral Commission and that the police didn't understand where exactly they wanted to terminate. So they have to try from the Central Police Office to the Electoral Commission so they can mark exactly where they'll be putting a barricade to prevent the supporters from crossing so they can have a peaceful demonstration on the 17th, Marina. And where have they agreed to have the, the barricade placed near the headquarters of the Electoral Commission? So, Marina, on my left, you can count one, two, three um, nim trees over there. So the first nim tree will be where they will be terminating um, for uh, after the demonstration, exactly where they will be terminating. It is very close to the entrance of the Electoral Commission head office here. And the police wanted them to go a little bit further, but... Uh, the NDC executive says, no, we came to meet the Electoral Commission. So going a bit further from this place means we didn't even embark on a demonstration at all, hence where they've agreed. It's very close to the entrance of the Electoral Commission. I think it's the very first time such mm. demonstration is going to take place and they've allowed the demonstrators to come this close to their point of presenting the petition, Marina. Uh, we know that Fifi Kwete has been speaking to the media. What more has he been saying? So for him, he is saying that it should be the interest uh, of the Electoral Commission to support the call for a forensic audit of the uh, voter register because if you don't have anything uh, uh, under the cabo, you don't, they don't see why you should be hiding or you should be preventing this audit from taking place because for the NDC, they are doing this thing to help the Electoral Commission to regain their uh, clean name so that they know that they are going to the election which 
uh, everything in order so they are calling the electoral commission to support the call for the audit of the uh, voter register. They are also calling on their members across the country to ensure that on the 17th, they join their various regional um, demonstrations so that they ensure that they have a fruitful demonstration. Also, they ask them not to be violent during the demonstration. This is a peaceful demonstration. They are calling for, for a good cause, so nobody should uh, cause any mayhem on the day of the demonstration. Marina. Let's take a listen to Fifi Kwete, who is speaking to journalists. Largely concluded that the date is feasible, so the demonstration is definitely going to happen next Tuesday on the 17th. Uh, we've also agreed on the on the route we are going to use. Uh, we're going to start from Kwame Kuma Circle, uh, come through Farisco, continue all the way to the National Theatre, and from there, I mean, it, it, it go on to Parliament House, and from Parliament House, we will finish at the, uh, the premises of the Electoral Commission. Uh, what we're going to just finalize right now is exactly uh, that's why we're going Terminate. to not to go to the point of termination that's the only part we want to conclude with them right away. so we are going with them right now to go and have a final look at the play in order to agree on a sub but generally that has been the agreement so far so the demonstration definitely is going to happen on the 17th of this month and the roots that's exactly what i've just mentioned but, 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 but the, the, the police is yet to give uh, the uh, full go ahead should the police say that they don't have the uh, I've just told you that we have concluded and it's an agreement on the dates mm -hmm. and also an agreement on the roots. So there's not like police is not going to be given an agreement. For all the systems. Yes. Yes. That's the NDC's General Secretary, Fifi Kwete, speaking there. Uh, earlier, my colleague Joseph Armstrong Gould, along with from the uh, headquarters of the Electoral Commission, where that protest by the NDC is expected to terminate on the 17th of September. This month. They will take us on to our very second break for this afternoon. When we return, a bit more politics and then the news that the Black Stars will no longer be able to use the Babayara Sports Stadium as home grounds for future footballing games in the country, both qualifiers for the World Cup and the Africa Cup of Nations. We have the details for you. Please do stay. is central let's talk the football in the country and the black stars of ghana because the confederation of african football covers asked the ghana football association to find an alternative venue for ghana's next home game after withdrawing its approval of the babayara stadium the babayara sports stadium received conditional approval to host ghana's opening game against angola in the 2025 africa cup of nations qualifiers on september 2 on September 5. However, CAF has come out with a revised decision following observations made from the Black Stars fixture, uh, fixture against the Palanca Negras. Joining us in the studio is Billy Shen from 3 Sports. Let's get a bit more as to what has gone into this decision. Bill, I think that's where we'll start off from. There are those who make the argument that, look, this has been long overdue, but what has gone into this revised decision that we're getting from CAF now? Uh, first of all, um, the kind of uh, stadium, you know, ones that CAF needs puts Ghana at a Category C. And Category C basically means they can host AFCON 2025 qualifiers matches, conditionally. Because, again, there were complaints a number of weeks before the game against Angola that the pitch wasn't really great. And that is one of the main requirements from CAF even from an A to B to C to D, that the pitch has to be of a of smooth, a certain level, of smooth a certain surface quality. and certain quality so you can play matches. Now, supposedly it looked good because the NSA released some videos and pictures just days before the game with the pitch looking green and all of that. So it was assumed that it could, you know, handle the wear and tear with 90 minutes of football be between Ghana and Angola. But we could see during the match that the pitch wasn't looking so great. And... That is one of the main requirements from CAF. The pitch has to be great. Some facilities in the stadium have to be also great. As well. Washrooms, everything have to be great for CAF to approve the stadium for a match like that because it's a qualifier to an AFCON. That's at least a category C. That's a, a very big, you know, ask. And again, we saw that, you know, that requirement wasn't met with regards to the pitch especially. And so CAF had to make that decision. And I did have conversations with some journalists and, you know, one of them told me, right? Uh, 
after the game that things were already being sent to me. And these complaints were from the Angolan team or officials who were present from Kapu, from Kapu were raising these complaints? Ghanaian journalists from... For a start, some Ghanaian journalists had already started making complaints to CAF to come and review and then make a decision as soon as possible. And we've seen that decision happen. However, the, the, there is still some hope for Ghana because, mm. again, there's one month left to that game against Sudan. If good one enough month. work is done, yes, we could see that uh, this revoking of the, of the line, since if we could call it that, yes. reversed again yes. on the part of Ghana. Yes. Assuming that doesn't happen, where are the likely destinations the Black Stars of Ghana could be headed for our next AFCON fixtures? There are a few. Um, first could be Ivory Coast because uh, that The, the country that hosted the 2023 African Cup, specific. There's also Morocco where Ghana played against Niger uh, back in the camp just a few days ago. And so that's also another option. And African reviews that matches of this caliber. And maybe we could see the game. Was Let's talk um, CAF outside of CAF, a legend of the game, Asamoah Gyan as well. Today, put out a release. Gas to the youth, and he's one person who has been very vocal about it, especially improving grassroots football and the fact that, you know, the, the kids need, you know, an environment they can play consistently and without having to think so much. Uh, but we do remember when the MPP released their manifesto recently. He sat on the, the sports committee yeah. for, for them. Yeah, he, he sat on the sports committee for them. And it was mentioned that, you know, AstroTurfs, about 145 were built. They're expecting more to be built. And the thing about AstroTurf is it limits the number of people who can play because, again, you have to, play, you have to pay to play. And that is the, the kind of you know, rules that come along with it because there's maintenance and all of that. And, you know, an ordinary, an average kid who wants to play football will likely not go to the AstroTurf mm. because he might not have the money to play. And so some journalists were actually questioning that bit because right. Asamojan was particularly vocal about that bit and having, you know, young kids getting the chance to play on three pitches and all of that. All right then, Bill. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot more conversations in relation to Asamojan and his decision uh, by my colleague Billy Shen from Three Sports uh, providing a bit more for us uh, in terms of what we know about Calf's decision to uh, ban in coat. Uh, Babayara Stadium and essentially all stadium or stadia in, in the country from being able to host international fixtures. They say that they had raised persistent or persistent complaints had come through and it does appear that we failed to be able to meet the standards that's required and so we cannot play football here in Ghana. We can move away from that and do regional hub. Now, the NPP in the Jusso says the return of its former member of parliament who contested in the recent by-election as independent candidate is a major boost to the party's chances of securing an overwhelming victory in the upcoming December, December 7th presidential and parliamentary elections. For more on this, we are joined by Ibrahim Abubakar, a Shanti region correspondent. Ibrahim, what else can you tell us about this? Well, um, officially, uh, I've not seen the um, Covenant Yomi um, on his return to the party. But um, at their launch, I saw some of his key um, team members who were there. And they said that indeed, he has returned to the party and now they are forming a united force. Obviously, 
some of his supporters were not too happy because they said uh, he had to go solo because the party didn't treat him well. well. But now that he has taken the decision to return to the party, uh, they have left, been left with no option than to respect that decision. And they are hoping that um, come December, they will be able to secure overwhelming votes. In fact, they are targeting not less than 90% of the votes in Edu. So even though since the creation of the constituency, they've never been able to um, got even 85%, but they are saying that this time around, um, they are sure that they are winning the seat, but for them to be able to break the eight in terms of the presidential, they have intensified campaign just so that they will get not less than 90% of the votes in that area. Kwabuna uh, Boateng is the um, Ejuso um, parliamentary candidate for the MPP. Issues were there. Uh, no doubt, I'm not going to go back, you know. But that is the beauty of family. We get issues, but we sit down, we talk, we settle, and then we move ahead. The evidence of the unity that we have achieved is the fact that the former MP who went independent is now back with the party together with all his, his, his people to form one big elephant family. And trust me, with this unification, we have victory ahead of us and we are going to achieve it. In fact, we are getting more than 90% in a Joseph for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. No less, we are not settling for less. 90% and above of the vote. A Joso is NPP, NPP is a Joso, and there's nothing anybody can do about that. And it is for a reason. And the reason is that a Joso does not see development when NPP is not in power. In 2008, when NPP left power, Every developmental project ceased in Ejoso until 2017 when the MPP was back in power. So the people know and they are going to take a very rational and objective decision to maintain the MPP so that the various road projects that are going on, the various schools and hospital upgrade that is going on will keep going on. I see Brian Masaduomi himself spoken about this issue anywhere at all. Well, officially, no. Uh, we were told that he was out of time during the campaign launch, but he would have been there um, in person. But then, like I said, some of his key campaign team members were there, and they have indeed confirmed that he has um, returned to the party, and for that matter, he's no longer going to contest as an independent parliamentary candidate in the December 7 election. Very well, Ibrahim, thank you so much for talking to us. Ibrahim Abubakar is our Shanti Region correspondent. Back in the capital, the general manager of Onia Group, a subsidiary of Media General Stephen Shandov, has assured Ghanaians and its global viewers of a comprehensive election news coverage as the country gears up for the December 7 elections. Making these remarks at the launch of the Onia Election Command Center, he called on all stakeholders of the Onia Group to deepen collaborations to help ensure a smooth democratic transition before and after the elections. As our tagline goes, and so we think about the masses and we are the mouthpiece of the masses. So, per uh, um, requirement, we need to provide this public service to them, providing them comprehensive and established coverage of the elections. We need to bring them insightful programs. We're going to show them pem pem. Uh, at FSM, we have Onyamati, we have People's Assembly on both platforms, radio and TV. And so we will focus on bringing them the truths, the facts, and then factual presentation of our reportage across the country. And they can count of us um, for all the information needed for them to be able to make informed and intelligent choices during the elections. This is what we have to, and we promise to deliver. And this is the station on your mm -hmm. FM and on your TV as well, launching the Election Command Center, and the promise is that we'll go full throttle and bring you the details as it happens here Indeed. on Media General. On all our platforms, you can trust us because we are your Election Command Center. Scan?
quickly before we leave the studios and pick up your smartphone, do that for us quickly and join the 3 News WhatsApp uh, family. That's where the 3 News WhatsApp channel, that's where you find all things news uh, from our news cards to you name it what. Links to 3news.com. Find it all there. It's a big growing family, like I tell you every afternoon. Do well and be a part of it. Our bulletin for you this afternoon. I am Maui Naid Beta. And I am Kemeni. Amano will see you same time tomorrow. Bye-bye.